And some people wonder, they come into a church and the minister's dressed like a witch, you know. What, what is this? What is spiritual about Halloween? It's everything. Because it's making fun of our fears. And isn't that what we should be doing? Making fun of our fears, not getting into fear. You know, Kelly, you love this, and my favorite Course in Miracle line, and I don't remember exactly how it goes, I'm paraphrasing, but it, meaning the craziness of this world, all began one day when someone forgot to laugh. Is that the best line ever? When something happened and someone forgot to laugh. So I'm going to count to three. When I get to three, let's all say boo and laugh. One, two, three. Boom! Boo. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta laugh. This world is far too crazy to take seriously. The Course reminds us, when you saw yourself as separate and alone, you couldn't help but suffer fear, loneliness, and all the ills that come from the base emotion of fear. Fear is degenerating, and nothing about fear is life-giving. You thus were given life only to have it become degenerated by fear. So to keep us laughing, why do mummies have no friends? Because they're too wrapped up in themselves. <laughs> Don't get ugly on me now. <laughs> Uh, how about this one? What do you get when you cross a vampire with a teacher? A lot of blood tests. Why don't ghosts like rain on Halloween? It dampens their spirits. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. As long as you laugh when you do it, you can do it. Okay. Okay, here's the best part now about Halloween. The Bible is full of Halloween stories, from the scary to the paranormal. I kid you not, did you know there is a witch and a seance in the Bible? I kid you not, I kid you not. It, her name is the woman of Ender, a lot of people call her the witch of Ender. And it is the most fun story. I just couldn't wait to come this morning to share it with you. And it's so unbelievable. If you don't believe me, it's in 1 Samuel 28, the woman or the witch of Ender. Now, she was called the witch by the people because she was a psychic. She was a medium. And back in the Bible, if you were a man and could tell, foretell the future, you were called a prophet. But if you were a woman, you were called a witch. Go figure. you got to laugh at this stuff, all right? You have to laugh. It's the only way to handle it. So let me give you a little background on this story. It was a, it was a time of transition from the matriarchal society to the patriarchal. That means... The women priestesses gave way to the male priests. From God as mother, the nature, honoring mother nature, to God as father. The woman of Ender was probably a priestess of the old goddess worship and the nature religions that honored the mother earth. And in the, in the traditional religions, we often hear in the old days that it was a sin to go to a psychic. Now that's a religious law, not, and it's all about politics, not religions. Because if you're trying to control people, the feminine power is what? Intuition. And can you think of, in Washington and all the politicians, I don't care what party you belong to, can you imagine if, if an intuitive person knows who's sleeping with who and who's doing what? Nothing is hidden. So this feminine power of intuition, which men have as much as women, it's not a man, it's not a man woman thing, it's the feminine power of intuition versus the masculine intellectual power. So, so they, they didn't want anybody to have to go to a woman for that intuitive power. Well, let's get to the story. Again, 1 Samuel 28, if you don't believe me, because it gets pretty crazy. Saul was king. Saul was the first king of Israel. And
that he had a real nervous disorder. Bless his heart. He had anxiety attacks left and right. If he were around today, they'd have put him on Prozac. I kid you not. The poor man was always having panic attacks. And he used to have David play the lyre, the musical instrument, to calm him and soothe him. But he got so paranoid that pretty soon he got to thinking that even David was out to kill him so that he could be king. And that was crazy. That was strictly paranoia. It made no sense. David wasn't like that. But does your fear ever make sense? Does your fear ever help in a situation? Of course not. Now to add to that, Saul used to go to Samuel, the prophet. He was a prophet because he was a man. And Saul used to go to him for comfort, but he just died. So Saul had no one to go to anymore. And this story, Saul's Dilemma, is both a comedy and a tragedy. You see, bless his heart, he was in deep <laughs> duty because there was an army coming against him of giant Philistines. They were a huge race of people, and there was an army coming against him. I mean, I'd have had a panic attack if that was happening. You can imagine what it did to Saul. He was so scared, he just wanted to go to someone to tell him everything was going to be all right. Haven't we all wanted that? We've all wanted that. Just tell me it's going to be okay. Lie to me. Just tell me it's going to be okay. Now, the irony of it, the catch-22, was Saul, as king, had made the rule. He expelled and forbade any mediums or wizards. And now he was wanting to go to one. What do you do when you're king and you've made a law that you can't go to a medium, and now you want to go to one? So he had to go at night, disguised, in secret. Now the woman of Ender gets a knock on the door, and here's this man in disguise, and she recognized him. She's a psychic, right? She knew it was the king, and she's afraid. He says he wants a reading. She says, uh -uh, this is a setup. If I do this, you're going to kill me. Back then, they were killed for that kind of things if they were a woman, right? <coughs> so Saul had a reassured her. Yes, I'm the king, and I know I made this rule that you couldn't go to psychics, but please, I just need to know everything's going to be okay. So okay. She said, okay. So here's how it goes. She does a seance. I kid you not, it's in the Bible, 2 Samuel 28, okay, if you don't believe me. She dredges up the ghost of Samuel. And here's how it goes. Saul says during the seance, what do you see? The witch of Endor said, I see a divine being coming up out of the ground. You're supposed to just go, ooh, all together now, ooh. <laughs> Saul said, what's his appearance? The woman of Ender said, well, an old man is coming up and he's wrapped in a robe. And he was angry. Samuel did not want to be brought back from the dead. And he wasn't real happy about it. He said, why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? And Saul said, I'm in great distress, for the Philistines are warring against me. And God has turned away from me and answers me no more, either by prophets or by dreams. So I have summoned you to tell me what I should do. And Samuel said what Saul already knew. He said, Saul, you are in deep doo-doo. <laughs> well, I'm paraphrasing that part. <laughs> prophets and psychics can see the future, but they can't change it. Oh, my God. The divine presence in all of us can change the future. So what do we do with this crazy story in scripture? What do we do with it besides enjoy it? Well, we look at it metaphysically. Every person, place, or thing is an aspect of me. This is me. This is my story. So Saul is the king, and the king is the ruling part of our consciousness. And this consciousness is very anxious and depressed because it's full of fear. And fear blocks the voice of God. Haven't you all been so afraid that you can't even pray, that you're so worried you can't even hear guidance, and you just want somebody to tell you it's going to be okay? Now Saul was the first king of Israel, so it's that part of us that's new at this. We're not used to listening to the voice of God. 
we're new at this, we're not quite attuned to hearing God's voice, so we keep looking in the outer for answers. In the handy dandy metaphysical Bible dictionary, if you look up Saul, the definition of Saul metaphysically is that part of us that is open to spirit, but when fear takes over, we can't hear the higher spiritual voice, so we rely on outer means or psychic voices. And the Philistine army, that's an easy one. That's those big, giant fears that are coming at us, those worries, those concerns. What are we going to do? This is too big. And the battle is that war between truth and fear and love and truth. When you know your union with God, there is no battle. When you live in the fear in this world of duality, you're in that battle all the time. Now, the woman of Ender, what a wonderful woman. She could hear the voices, the psychic voices. And there's many voices in the psychic realm. That's why psychics are only as good as what they listen to. And there are many layers of voices to listen to. A lot of people say, well, I can hear the voice of my Uncle Harry who died on. I'm channeling him. And I always say, if your Uncle Harry wasn't too bright on earth, he's probably not any smarter just because he's on the other side. <laughs> you have to listen to the higher voices, the higher voices of spirit, of pure divine voice, all right? Some psychics listen to the astral plane. The astral plane is full of any thought or word or anything that's ever happened. There's all kinds of trash in the astral plane. We want to go above that to the higher plane. And that's what Samuel represents. That part of us that is attuned to the Christ mind. And prayer helps us release fear to get to rise up in consciousness, to get to where we hear the higher voices of God's presence, not the lower voices of our human fears. So what's the moral of this story? Psychics can see the future but can't change it. God can. Remember the other battle in the Bible, Jehoshaphat. I think I talked about Jehoshaphat the second or third Sunday I was here. When he said the bat that God said to Jehoshaphat, that higher voice, the battle's not yours, it's God's. Don't worry about that, God will take care of it. And Jehoshaphat went out toward battle, and there were three armies coming against him, not just one. And those three armies started fighting against each other, and by the time Jehoshaphat got there, the battle was over. All his people had to do was pick up the spoils. That's listening to the higher voice, trusting in your union with God, not the outer illusionary world that can be so fearful some days. Going to a psychic is not wrong. It's not a sin. I don't want psychics starting to pick up the church. I'm not trying to put them out of business. I'm married to one for Pete's sake. So, you know, I'm not, it's okay to go to a psychic. But I love it. Sometimes I'll go up to Michael, just tell me, tell me it's going to be all right. And he'll say, Amory, you can hear the voice of God just as much as I can. I hate it when he does that. <laughs> so I'm like, tell me it's going to be all right. He's right. He's right. Okay, that's the thing we have to know. God's voice is in you too. You don't need another person. We may want another person to tell us. But if we go up in prayer and meditation, to the higher realms, through the astral plane, through all the garbage in the world. The voice is there for us, to guide us, to comfort us, to strengthen us. We have to know whose voice we're listening to. The ego's voice is listening to all the outer voices of fear and separation. The psychic astral plane is on the other side, but it's not that high of an energy. All the way through to the higher voices of the Christ mind the highest vibrational state of love and wisdom. Those are the voices we listen to. So we have to ask ourselves every day, whose voice am I listening to? Oops. Whose voice am I listening to? And have discernment. Psychics are like all professionals. Some are better than others. 
Some people think they hear the voice of God and they not. Has anybody ever, I love it when this happens to me, has anybody ever come up to you and said, God told me to tell you. Has that ever happened to you? Whenever somebody says that, I start rolling my eyes. You know. If God's going to talk to me, God will usually talk to me. And yeah, once in a while somebody does give me a message. But when they say, God told me to tell you, usually they're wanting to tell me. You know, so you have to discern, is this the voice of God, or is this the human ego? And here's how you know. If that voice feels right, if you feel more peace than fear, that's the voice of God. If it's loving, not judgmental, that's the voice of God. If it empowers you rather than judges you, that's the voice of God. It may prompt you to action rather than paralyze you into fear. And that voice is always for the highest good of all. will never steer you to hurt anyone. Glenda Green in her book Love Without End compared the two voices to a surrogate power or indigenous power. And she said surrogate power is delegated by us to structure authority and forces external to ourselves. Indigenous power is what happens when a person turns to the heart and activates that indigenous power of God within us all. What a difference, what a difference. So to recap, it's not a sin to go to a psychic. The woman of Ender was a good woman. She was a good psychic, her predictions were right. She saw the doo-doo that Saul was in. She was right on. But she couldn't change it. Saul went into battle and he did die. But God's voice is always prompting us. If we're open to listen without our preconceived ideas and attachment to what that voice should be saying, to what we think it should be, if we can let go of what we think and listen to that inner voice. And that's where prayer comes in because prayer helps us to focus away from the world of appearances and to hear the voice of God. And God can take the doo-doo and make fertilizer out of it for your good. And with that, we'll go into prayer. And just allow, allow that voice of God, that presence of love that is right here, to enter into your mind and heart right now with whatever concern you may have this morning, whatever doubt or fear, or maybe just a tiny little worry that's gotten you down. We know there is a voice in you that is filled with power and light. You dwell in the house of truth. You dwell in that higher place where that voice resides, a voice of comfort and light, a voice of love and peace, filling you with the courage to move through whatever it is you're walking through with grace and with ease. United with God, we walk through this effortlessly. We are empowered together this morning with each other. We stand and dwell in the house of truth. And we say thank you, Father, Mother God, for we do affirm this in the very nature of the living Christ within us all. And so it is, so it truly is. Amen. Continue this morning's celebration by standing and singing together two verses of Every Need is Fulfilled. <laughs> 